5 minutter da. Well, uh, the acting deputy governor, Mr. Sally Reed. Act? Acting governor. Governor, <laughs> sorry. Yes, governor. Sorry. The, the acting governor, Mr. Sally Reed, the minister of social development, um, the permanent secretary, I think I saw her in the Ministry of Social Development, Mrs. Chanel Petty, um, permanent secretary in the Chief Minister's office, Mr. Ken Hodge, family and friends, well wishers, and of course, the media. This is indeed a special occasion for Anguillians today, and in particular for Shara, but not only for Shara, it is also a very proud moment for Anguilla, of course. This journey started several years ago, and I've been fortunate enough to follow Shara and to see her compete in most of her events, and she's always been at the top. And uh, her performance in Germany, which is really what we're here to celebrate today, her sixth place in the World Championships in Germany, was to me something expected, having seen her perform over the years. But um, I know all Anguillians are celebrating, will be celebrating today with us, commemorating Shara's sixth place in long jump in the world. Um, welcome home, Shara. Shara, uh, Keepstone Graves, ATV3 Sport. How does it feel to be back home? It feels wonderful. Meeting everybody at the airport, welcoming me back feels great because I know I have supporters and I will. And I would like to thank everybody for that. Okay. Now, in terms of your performance, finishing sixth at the in the long jump in the World Athletic Championships in, in Berlin, certainly representing the Caribbean, being the only Caribbean athlete in the long jump in, in Berlin. What was the feeling like? It was a good experience because coming into competition, I was the underdog. No one expected me to come sixth place six in the world. And for me, that was really a pro moment because I represented not only Anguilla, but the Caribbean. And so I felt like I made, made the Caribbean pro. You've had an outstanding year with the University of Miami. You've been dominating the track and field program for your university. Give us, tell us a bit about your exploits this season, both in the outdoor and indoor seasons. Well, indoor season is the first season, and it's mainly a preparation for the outdoor season, so it's not as good as the outdoor season. But it's still, for me, um, it's still, a good season because I never did it before, so doing it indoors right now is I guess, a stepping stone. And but the outdoors is a it's better because I PR'd every year, every year improve, and so this year I hope to improve again. Most of records. A pleasant surprise, Shara, that your coach, your personal coach, is here. A word about your coach and how you two. I've been able to work together to provide uh, such a fine, uh, such fine performances. Yeah, a, a word about your coach, your, the relationship between your coach and yourself. Oh, me and Coach Rada. <laughs> we have a great relationship. Uh, he's currently not working at the University of Florida, but we still keep our relationship strong, and he's here helping us out and help them to improve the program in Anguilla. The athletics program here in Anguilla is growing leaps and bounds. Um, what sort of advice, word of encouragement would you have for young Anguillan athletes aspiring to uh, get to where you've been and even going beyond? I would just tell them to keep persevering. If you have a goal, just go for it. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Just go for it. Uh, Shara, the support you've gotten from not only the Anguillian community, but certainly your family. I know you're very close to your, to your family, your mother, father, and uh, other um, family members. The, the sort of encouragement that you've gotten from, from your family, the family support. Uh, I appreciate all the family support because without them, I probably wouldn't reach this far. Uh, I would just like to say thanks. <laughs> Tell us a bit about school. I know that's a priority, of course, mixing education with, with your track and field program, and of course, setting an example that you can have a happy marriage between education and sport. 
Yeah, of course. Um, I have to be a scholar before I'm after. If I'm not, I would obviously not be in school right now. So I have to make that a priority. And what's ahead for you? You're taking a break now, but certainly you'll be back in training pretty soon, I would imagine. Yeah, um, right now is preseason training and we're getting ready for uh, indoor season in late January. So I guess I have to keep training and make sure I keep in shape. Okay, sure. Right now we don't want to hold you, Coach. Right now we'd like to have a quick uh, chat with you, certainly your involvement. Tell us a bit about your background, your involvement with, with Shara. Um, I started working with Shara her freshman year uh, when uh, midway through the indoor season. Um, and it was kind of a rocky start because I have a pretty aggressive program with training. And uh, we've grown and, and learned each other and um, you know, she works hard and, and she's gotten better every year. And I think Berlin was um, just a huge stepping stone for her and for what's going to happen in the future. What, what makes a special athlete uh, coach? I mean, her parents are obviously have great genes, so <laughs> she's genetically gifted. But, um, but she works hard. She understands the sport. She tries to be a student of the sport. So um, lots of video. She just wants to be dedicated and, and learn. So uh, you know, she grows. Now, you were with her in Berlin. What was the feeling like finishing sixth among the world's top athletes, only Caribbean athlete in the long jump final? Um, well, I wanted to run around the stadium screaming, but I <laughs> sat there nice and calm and pretending like it was just supposed to happen. But, I mean, for, for a year we knew she was ready to jump far, and in practice she was jumping far, and so it was just getting it done at the right time. And, and you know, it, the, the background of it was she had to do it on her third round to make the final, and so that was when she had her big jump and made the final and kind of bounced everybody out of the way that didn't know what she yeah. could do it. Just adding a little bit to what Keith was saying, do you think uh, her best we should see her best through this year, or you know, um, you think she's reached her peak? No, I don't think she's anywhere near what she can jump in the future. I think if um, she stays healthy and continues to grow, and uh, you know, 2012, you know, Olympic time, she'll be you know, one of the top jumpers in the world. That's my opinion. Coach, you've worked with many athletes: um, Clay, uh, Dwight Phillip, um, Atkins from the Bahamas, Shara Proctor. How? how you know, how we would you rate Shara's own performance uh, working alongside these other world-class athletes? I mean, you got to look at everyone individually, but with Shara, with being the youngest of all those group of athletes, and then with no one really expecting her to make a final or, or excel the way she did, I think you know that was probably the performance that I've had um, of any major championship. I know you're here conducting a clinic, and you would have seen many of the up and covering uh, shower practice. What have you been able to s pick up so far? Um, no, I mean, we're having fun. And I think the biggest thing, in, like with the little kids, we're just trying to promote, you know, fitness and get them excited about sport and keep them involved. And then as they get older, you get more specific with what events they want to do or what sports they want to do. But just being active and healthy is the main thing. Get them excited about being on the field, doing stuff that's fun. As an experienced coach, um, what does it take to make a world-class athlete? Give us some of the mechanics, some of the programs that, that you, you would have to put together to bring an athlete from, from here to here. I mean, I think the first thing is just having a long-term plan. Like, so, I mean, we have, like, you know, yearly plans, four-year plans, but then you have to break it down into daily plans. Like, what is your goal for the day? And, you know, each day you work towards getting a little bit better and, and learning and growing and trying to be a little bit fitter, a little bit stronger. Coach Ryder, thank you very much, and also to you, um, a word now with our sports minister, Honorable Evans McNeil Rogers. Uh, minister, certainly a proud moment uh, for you, but certainly the wider Anguillian community. Your, your thoughts and comments on, on Shara's performances, and of course, uh, the welcome in reception for Shara Proctor. Let me take this opportunity to personally, and on behalf of the, the ministry and, and by extension, the government and people of Anguilla, to welcome you back. Thanks. You're truly an ambassador. Um, I would like also to take this opportunity to congratulate and commend her parents for a job well done and the extended family. I would also like to echo here that despite not having the type of facilities that you've seen by exposure, uh, it sends a message that once you're focused and committed to what you're doing that you can be successful. Number six in the world is a great feat for Anguilla or any country by extension. And not having those sort of basic facilities, I think it is even greatest for us 
you are number one and you'll continue to be number one 